Hi, Don Bailey. I'm going to show you how to put a crisscross on the end of a shaft. There's two ways to do it. One way is to do it over here on the surface grinder, which is a good way to do it. The other way is to do it on the OD grinder. We're going to show you both methods today. We're going to start here. Now, to save time for the video, I've already made the setup here. And what I did was I put an indexing fixture master grind here, and I've already indicated it to get it parallel with a chuck. So we put an indicator on here and we swept the face of this to make sure we got it square. Because if you don't get it square, you're not going to get the crisscross, right? You're going to get one side or the other and you will not get a crisscross. You'll get a pretty edge, but it won't be a crisscross. So we're going to show you how we're going to do it here first. Make sure the chuck is on, which we did. Spindle's ready to go. We've got it clamped in pretty good. And we're going to feed in. And by the way, I know I've got the wheel on center. The wheel has to be, the edge of the wheel has to meet the center right here with the center drill in. So we've already made that alignment. I can see within a few thousands, so we'll feed in a little bit, look at that, that came in within a couple of thousands. You can tell by the sound when it cleans up. take a look at that. So I'm going to pop that baby out and see, and we'll see what it looks like. We'll lock it down. Got to be careful not to move the fixture. We don't want to get it out of square. Even though the magnet's on, it can still move a little bit. That's to break it loose. Well, we can see it's not cleaned up all the way. Do we have a crisscross? Yes, we do. So we're going to put it back in and take another cut. Wipe it down. Take our Allen wrench. Use that for a little leverage. And I like to tighten going down, because if I tighten sideways, it's apt to move on me. I like to use the chuck for a little assistance. Again, bringing it back in. Moving to stop, so we've got some movement here. That definitely sounds better. Consistent. By the way, we didn't talk about the wheel. This happens to be a 60i wheel, which is a little finer, but it'll hold up. The point won't. Uh, the point of the wheel or the edge of the wheel won't disappear on us quite or won't break down as quickly. What I took what I'm talking about is I dished this wheel when I dressed it. So it's kind of cupped. This is the point right here, and this area back here has been relieved. So we're really grinding right here on this point. And that's important to know. So we'll take a look at it now and see if it's cleaned up. I like to tap it just to break it loose. There we go. Now we got a crisscross and it's cleaned up. You got a good shot of that, Glenn? Oh yeah. And just move that around so you can see in the light. Now remember, 
because of the diameter of this wheel, you're not going to get a very big distinct crisscross. We're going to get that on the OD grinder with the larger wheel. But this gives you an idea of how you can do this on the surface grinder as well. So we're going to turn it around. We'll do the other end and we'll call it a day over here. We've got some more we can grind. We've got another half a dozen shafts that we can grind for everybody. We'll give, give you an idea what it's going to look like when we're all said and done. And uh, I love doing this. To me, this is fun. Love making pretty things look pretty. Still love being out in the shop. You like making sparks. I like making sparks, man. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. I love it. I think that's good. Bring that baby out and take a peek at it. Again, lock it down. Up oh, lunchtime, let's go. There we go, the other side. Look pretty cool, eh? Real nice. <coughs> All right, so that's one way to do it. And as I mentioned, there are several ways to do it. OD grinder is sometimes faster. It depends. Once you get set up here, it's pretty quick. Uh, OD grinder is too. So we're going to head over to the OD grinder next. We're going to get that baby set up. We're going to show you how to do it over there. Crisscross. That's the ticket today. All right, we've moved over to the OD grinder. I love it. I love being here. love doing this sort of thing. I'm going to show you the setup right from the beginning. First thing I want to do is clean off the ways. It's, you know, crud and crap gets in there, so it's really takes a second and it's going to preserve the long the long term life of the machine. So I wipe it down a little bit. Love my job. Love what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to loosen this up. We're going to change the center because the center is not what we want. So I've got a center now and you can see the relief in there. That's so the wheel can get up against this part of the center. So we're going to clean that out a little bit. I always like to get the crap out of there. And make sure it's seated good. Okay, I like that. Now I want to make sure that we clean the ways again, stone them just a little bit. Stone the edge. This is important too. And the back one. Now we can take our part, which is what we're going to grind. We're going to remember we're going to put a crisscross on this end. Right, Glenn? Yep. I gotta tell you, I love being here. That's loose. It's supposed to be. There we go. Alright, I think I got enough of a load on there. Now, again, we're gonna put a crisscross. So we're going to grind with this edge of the wheel, so we need a sharp point here, which this wheel feels like it's got a pretty good point on it. And we'll get our wheel going here. Going to crank this baby in a little bit. Bring it up pretty close to that center so we can have room to get in there. We'll come in and bump it and see if it's crisscrossed. If it's not, we'll have to adjust the tailstock. By Yemeni, it's on. Okay, well, 
we've got a pretty decent crisscross there. I'm not sure that it's exactly right. So if we look at this, it's hitting at the top. If you kind of look at that right, you can see where it's hitting there, but not very much at the bottom, which means we've got to lift this tailstock up just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is probably take a piece of paper, which is about three thousandths or four thousandths, somewhere in that area, and raise it up that amount. So let me get a piece of paper and I'll be right back. You know, one thing I really can't emphasize enough, and that's safety. Look, these are very, very close quarters that we have here. I'm an experienced guy on the OD grinder. I'm not worried so much about making a fatal mistake and having a problem with my losing a finger or anything, but, but this is close stuff. If you look at the amount of movement that I have, the range that I have to get the part out, to put it in, and I'm right next to the wheel, it can be very dangerous. So those of you that are inexperienced, I wouldn't suggest you try this at home. It's not a good idea. But if you're an experienced guy, you know how to do it. You know the safety factors involved. You need to be careful. That's critical. Otherwise, you're going to lose a finger, throw a part, who knows what. But again, I'm an experienced guy. I've been doing it a long time, so I haven't done it in a while, but I never forgot. So I'm cautious enough, I'm not going to hurt myself. But some of you guys might if you get into quarters this tight. So when you make your setup, please give yourself a little more room than I provided. All right. The lines won't make any difference, right? The, the, the wrong lines. Wrong lines. So we're going to put it right in this area just to lift it up a bit. Not a lot of movement for air in here, folks. All right, so we'll take a look at that and see what that looks like. It's getting there. It's still not quite right. So I'm going to put another piece of paper in there about the same thickness. Again, we'll use the line stuff, right? Yeah. Sorry, it's all again. And I might even put two of them in there this time. I didn't move it much. Then we got to put the dog up against the driver. Give it another shot. Now you can pretty much tell when you're when you're grinding it, whether it's there or not, and it's still not right. Now, I went too far. See that? It's grinding on the bottom now, which means I'm up. So now i got to drop it down a bit. So why'd you give me three pieces of paper? That's too many. Two would have been just right. Maybe it's the lines. <laughs> You don't have to hammer. You know, so often we see we see guys out there tightening stuff way more than it needs to be. Now that's a judgment call. So I'm not suggesting that you leave anything loose, but there's no need to take a hammer to it either.
You can tell I've done this for a long time because I forget which way the spindle goes. There you go. You can actually see it. You can see the crisscross while it's grinding. Look at that. How sweet is that? Is that pretty cool? That's real nice. See, now you'll notice the difference between this one and the first one that we did. The first one that we did on the, on the surface grinder doesn't show the distinct crisscross. Why? Because the wheel is smaller in diameter. The bigger the wheel, the more of a crisscross you're going to get. It looks like it's got a star. Yeah, it looks like a star. Doesn't it? it looks pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that cool? So anyway, I'll do the other side real quick just to show you how fast it is. And by the way, Brad's right about this. I think it's faster to do it on the OD grinder than it is to fool around on the surface grinder. Partially because the setup was faster too. Again, snug it. You don't have to crank it down so tight that uh, you need a hammer to get it off. Bring it in. All I have to do is touch it. You see the crisscross. Hey. Pretty cool. Would that take seconds, right? Not even. So that's how we put a crisscross on an OD grinder, and that's what it takes to make sure that you get the wheel perpendicular. So it's not this way or this way. It's got to be just right. That's why we shim the tail stop to make sure that that happens. So I love doing this. I love making shiny things. So I'm going to ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and share our videos with others. And if you have any ideas or things that you'd like to share with us, we ask that you send them to us. We'll be glad to put them on YouTube. So send us uh, your ideas to America's Toolmaker at Subtool.com. America's Toolmaker at Subtool.com. And thanks for watching.